You might know me on social media as Netters Plays. Well, it's that time of month again where I go over the games that I acquired and the impressions that they left behind. So I acquired 10 games this month and I want to go over them. I only got to play three of those 10 games. So um, a lot there's a lot of charity events that I, that I participated in and uh, some of the games I got from that. So I, I didn't manage to play those games. But uh, I'll go over that too with you. Uh, firstly though, I want to go over the games that I did manage to play and then I'll go over the ones that I didn't afterwards. So let's get to it. So the first game I'll talk to you about is this game called Elevens is for One. It's a, a quirky little solitaire game and it's basically about tea time. So yeah, so you're this, this lady, this maid, and what she's trying to do is trying to get these different uh, sets of, of things for a tea party. So she's trying to prepare, ex for example, a cup of milk, some sugar, some biscuits, some cake and treats and such, and put them all onto a tray, and then it's tea time, so she'll go out and serve them. What you're doing is you have this, like, small deck of cards. It's only a couple cards. But what you're trying to do is trying to arrange them in order and you're trying to do it in uh, the least amount of time before it's tea time. You don't want to forget anything while you, you know, get ready for tea. So uh, it's a really cool little quirky game. It plays in about 10-15 minutes. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was alright. I mean, something to kind of pass over time, but I wouldn't say it's a great little solitaire game. Uh, my personal opinion, of course. So. Um, the other little treat that I actually got with this game is that I backed this on Kickstarter and I didn't actually realize that it came with another little game in it too. It's actually a Sid Saxon game that was uh, actually created a while back and it's called uh, Sid Saxon Solitaire uh, Bowling Game. So the cool thing about this is that you have these cute little pins and they all have like different faces and such, little happy ones. Some of them are sad, or some of them are kind of like surprised or scared and such. So, or some of them sadly are gone. So, <laughs> so it's pretty cute in that in the sense of the card design and such. So, I really like that. Uh, another cool thing about this, it's really mathematical. You're trying to add up and subtract and kind of figure out the last digit of of your addition and such, and try to knock out these pins. And so. You're trying to do this and, and try to knock out and strike uh, a set of triangular pins. And the cool thing too about this game is where it comes with a little score pad and it looks just like a bowling score pad. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty neat too. And actually I enjoyed this game a little bit more than the other one. It's a small little solitaire game. When I first was playing it, my partner Mitch like really was wondering what the heck I was doing. And he pretty much said, oh, that's a really cool little game. So then he decided to play it. And then I thought I could challenge him and do better than what he did. So I ended up playing after him. And then we both ended up challenging one another. And we did this for quite a bit. <laughs> so I really enjoyed the uh, Sid Saxon Bowling Solitaire. So the next game that I actually managed to play too is the Manhattan Project Chain Reaction Card Game. So this game itself was on Kickstarter. I got the deluxe edition and it's actually signed by the designer too. So um, I got this game because I'm a fan of the Manhattan Project game. It's a really nice worker placement game that can get a little mean. So I wanted to play a little small version of it. And so this card game kind of summed it all together into a quick little like uh, engine building type of game with workers and and you collect a certain amount of resources to actually make bombs and blow up stuff. So, so yeah, uh, I've actually been playing this game a lot uh, recently. I think every day I've been playing it since I got it. 
So the cool thing about this is that these cards are actually multi-use cards. So in order to get yellow cake, you have to have this certain person or, or personnel. And what you do to get that is you use a different card by placing it sideways. So then uh, these different cards have either scientists or laborers or engineers. And you can get either like these little cool yellow cake uh, things. This is with the deluxe edition. So there's like yellow cake. And then there's also these like uranium kind of tokens, which are really neat. And um, yeah, so you're developing your little uh, engines by collecting these little different pieces. And when you collect enough uranium and personnel, you could build bombs. <laughs> so these different bombs right here, you, you try to collect them because they are valuable in points. And whoever scores uh, 10 points at the end of the game, or first, actually wins. So it's a quick little game, and we play it in about like 10, no, about 15 minutes or so. So it's a really quick, light game, and it's really like, see who can get there first. We draw a hand of cards and we kind of figure out this little puzzle in our hand. So I've really actually been enjoying this game a lot. So I'm not sure if it's out already. It should be, but if you manage to to uh, see this around and if you like engine building and a small little deck of cards, then try to check this one out. It's the Manhattan Project Chain Reaction Game. Those are all the games that I did actually manage to play, and they weren't that many, but I did acquire quite a few games uh, that I didn't manage to play this month, but I'll go over those. So the first game I'll go over is this game called Booze Barons. Now, Booze Barons, Mitch, my partner, he actually won this in a raffle. We went to this small little mini convention, it's called HadeCon, and in this convention, basically it was held at a church, and they offered a raffle and an auction. And during the raffle, he managed to win this game. Now, it's a social deduction game, and we're not necessarily about those type of games, but the designer was there, and he promised to sign the game, which he did. He actually managed to sign it. And he also offered to create some customizable pieces for this game. So we were totally interested in that, because we thought, you know, why not? So we created, he created this these little player tokens of my partner, Mitch. And I don't know if you can see that, but <laughs> it's just him standing there. It's pretty cool. And then this also big piece with his face right there. So <laughs> we thought it was really neat. And so we thought, why not? You know, let's get this game and let's get these customizable pieces with, you know, Mitch's face all over it. So, <laughs> so yeah, that is Booze Barons. And so we all, we won this in a raffle, so. That's pretty cool. So this next game uh, was also a game that we acquired at HadeCon. Now this game wasn't a raffle prize. It was actually uh, a part of an auction that I participated in. Um, so HadeCon is basically this small mini convention and it was, uh, it was made basically with the intention of raising money and awareness for uh, this group that goes out to Haiti. And what they do is they provide medication for tuber tuberculosis patients as well as patients with AIDS. So um, to cure tuberculosis, a patient has to go and complete these medications uh, every, every day for a set of, of months. So the thing is, for this medication, it costs only $40 a month to do. And that's no big deal for, for myself or anyone that might you know, live out here in the States. However, in Haiti, that's a lot of money. So what this uh, charity does, this Haiti Conda did, is raise money through raffles and also through auctions. So I participated in this auction, not necessarily to, to just get games at low cost, but it's also just to, to donate money to, for a good cause. So um, yeah, so what I won in this auction was this game called Runebound, and it's the second edition. And the reason I got this game, um, not only for charity, is because it's a game that I, I've actually been interested in playing because it's it's a fantastical adventure, like exploration type of game. It kind of reminds me of Mage Knight. And I, I like Mage Knight, but it never hits the table because it's so long and it's pretty difficult to play. 
and, and get all the rules down and everything. So uh, this game also is long, <laughs> but hopefully not as much. But um, the reason I was interested in this is because it also has all the expansions in there and it's all unpunched and untouched. So it's pretty much brand new. So yeah, I wanted to get this game and just also um, donate for the good cause. So um, that's why I got this. So this is Runebound 2nd Edition with all the expansions as well. Uh, so the next set of games I'll, I'll go over together and it's pretty much I acquired these games too through another charitable event. Uh, the Sit Down Standard is a podcast and they also have a YouTube channel and uh, what they do is every now and then uh, they, they have these charitable events for uh, St. Jude hospital and so what they did is they to try to wait, raise awareness and money for St. Jude and so I, I donated last Christmas for this um, and I also wanted to donate during this time too that they did it for I think the month of June so um, what they do is in order to participate you just donate some money for the event and then you will be entered into a raffle and I won some games so I'll go over these games, and um, <laughs> this games that I got, it's the Cthulhu, um, it's the Cthulhu set. So yeah, I got these uh, Cthulhu-based games, like for example, the Fast and the Fathagor, Fathagon, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. To tell you the truth, I'm not a big Cthulhu fan, so um, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. But, you know, I didn't participate in this event simply to win this set or games itself is it's just a good cause that I participated in just to donate money and um, so I did win these games and I really do appreciate them and such but it's it's just the Cthulhu theme I'm not necessarily a f too big of a fan of but it's a pretty much a racing game in the realm of Cthulhu another one too was the Cthulhu 500 I guess it's like the Indy 500 it's a small little box game card game too and uh, it's also in the Cthulhu world so there you go uh, another one which I, I don't know about this artwork but it's called cults across America so yeah look at that <laughs> um yeah I'm not sure what to think about this one but I never even opened it or don't even know what it's about never heard of it before so that's another game I acquired. <laughs> uh, another one too that I have heard of is uh, the Cthulhu Gloom. Now I have Gloom and it was one of the first games that I ever bought. And Gloom was really interesting because the cards in here are transparent. So if you have a certain card that you play, you can place another card on top of it and then the amount of actions or the scoring amount is different. So you can either hinder your opponent or you can increase your points on your own personal cards. And what you're trying to do is make your families miserable in Gloom. And in Cthulhu Gloom, I'm assuming you're trying to, I guess, overcome the world with these Cthulhu monsters, I guess? I'm not sure, but it's in the Cthulhu realm of Gloom. So yeah, I have heard of this. and. This is probably the, one of the more interesting ones of the bunch for me. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I also want to thank uh, Sit Down Standard for giving me these games and also for the Atlas Games too for donating these games for that event. So good job, you guys. All right, so I saved the best for last. Now, the thing is I haven't managed to play this game and it's kind of embarrassing because I've been waiting for this game for over a year now. And uh, there's been a lot of hype of this game, and so I'm just going to tell you right now. It's Scythe, of course. So I managed to get Scythe, and I got the Collector's Edition from Kickstarter. The cool thing about this game are all the components that it comes with. Now, because I haven't played the game, I can't really tell you how it plays or if I liked it or not. But I can tell you pretty much about the artwork and its components. And I can tell you just right off the bat that everything looks awesome. It's all great. So uh, one of the cool things that I found are these little miniatures. Now, I don't have very many games with miniatures, but for example, like this one right here, I mean, you, 
hopefully you could see that, but look at the detail and everything in that. And so every single player is going to get their own little miniature piece. And so hopefully you can see that, but it's really, really awesome. Like these cool little pieces, figurines that you're, you're actually is going to represent you. Not only that, everyone is also going to get like these cool mechs and these cool like different little mechanical like combat machines and so they're really intricate really detailed i'm never going to have the time to paint them and i don't think i really want to but um yeah uh, another cool thing is some of the resources that it comes with um uh, it comes with wooden resources but if you get the collector's edition like i did you also get these cool little resource bits and so they're already painted and there's a whole bunch of them. So you get like a whole tray full of these different resources. And so like you get like this actual iron bit. And let me tell you, I mean, it looks solid, right? But it's actually metal, like it's heavy. And um, you get like these different oil bins and such. So it's really cool to, to get these different like wooden pieces and all that and, and play with these little bits. Well, uh, another cool thing that the game actually has is it comes with money and like a resource as a resource, but in this case, you're actually getting real metal coins for the collector's edition. So you actually get like real metallic money that you can actually pick up and it has some sort of, you know, weight and value to it. So it really enhances the game in that kind of way. Um, another cool thing too is the artwork itself. So the artist, I don't know how the artist created so much artwork in such little time, but the artwork in this is just gorgeous. Like it creates these huge, like different types of scenes and such. And every single card is different from one another. So it's really fantastical and, and really neat how, how the artwork is different for these huge cards. And there's like a whole deck of them along with all these other deck of cards too. So there's another set of deck uh, of cards too. And the artwork is just superb. Everyone is, uh, is also gonna get a different little player board. And so the cool thing about this, which I really like is that it's not just a board, but it's two boards pasted onto one another where they can actually hold your little bits. So they're indented. So that way, when you put something on it, it's not moving around or anything. It'll stick there. And that was really like ingenious. I mean, it takes a little bit more effort, but I think it's well worth it. Uh, another cool thing that it also comes with are these cool little dials too. Uh, and the artwork, again, it's fantastic. So um, yeah, I mean, the components themselves, great. And then the major big thing too <laughs> is the board itself. So it comes with this huge board this is the world of Skype. so this is this is what you play on when you're playing this game you're playing on this huge board itself and the collector's edition itself is not just this but it also has a second portion to it so it can even get a lot bigger so on the back side of it i can't even turn this around because it's so freaking big but <laughs> Yeah, you can even make this board even bigger and it's pretty awesome. It makes it like, it makes it like it's really overtaking your world <laughs> in a literal sense. So yeah, I'm really interested in playing this game. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get it on the table, but actually after watching uh, the Watch It Played by Rodney Smith, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it to the table pretty soon now that I know how to play the game. So. Yep, that is Skyth the Collector's Edition. Alright, well thanks for joining me and checking out the games that I acquired and my initial first impressions of them for the month of July. So again, if you like this type of video or if you want to see any further videos, just please subscribe, like if you want, and also uh, if you have any games that you acquired or you have any other suggestions of games that I should acquire, just leave it down in the comments below and I'll make sure to respond as well. So make sure you can follow me on the Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. I'm also on meeplesincluded.com. I'll leave a link for that too. And I'm also a part of the Instant Gamers Network. So 
all the information is going to be at the end of the video and also right below in the description. So thanks for watching you guys and I hope you enjoyed it. So have a nice day. Bye.